Good morning. Today we're going to be taking a look at how we can use JUnit unit tests so we can do some problem solving using Java. Um, I'm over here and I'm inside my chatbot test project. And we're going to start off here at the top. So my, I'm using unit testing so we can actually go ahead and we can try and do some problem solving where instead of me simply telling you what code you need to fix, we're going to use it to, so we can say and figure out what has to happen and what's going on inside the code, trying to identify using some um, messages that we can provide to you and then going from there. So I've got this inside my chatbot test project. And so I can, I'll go ahead and put the test for this inside a, a GitHub repo for you as well, but it's also available as part of my class library. So you can get it just straight on my class if you're part of the class. Um, but what we wanna do is let's go ahead and take a look at the class file itself really fast. We'll go ahead and collapse all the code here really quick. Um, so as you can see, I've got, I'm using JUnit 5 for this test structure. You can see that by the fact that it's using Jupyter right there. Um, I've got my public class chatbot test, which is designating what I'm using with chatbot to go along that. Now. With this right here, these are the tests that you have to run so that and you can figure out what's happening with that. You're not writing the tests themselves. You're just figuring that out so you can try and get the functionality of your app. But this is something you could work on doing later on and actually writing your own tests as well. And we'll talk more about that in another video. But this is just something you can do for problem solving purposes. So you'd get this file, you'd add it to your project, and you try and figure out what's going on and so you can figure out the errors that are happening inside your code so you can make cool stuff happen. And so let's go ahead and take a look at what's happening inside that. The first thing we have is the setup and teardown methods. The setup and teardown methods, as you can see, they have the annotations of before each and after each in front of them. That's indicating that these them tests themselves happen before and after every single test, basically reinitialize the data. So we have a clean data set every time we're working with that. The first test we're working with in class was the test setup lists. So the setup list test is designed to make sure that I have some lists set up of information that I can use with my chatbot so it can talk about different topics. And so when I first have it right here, right now I've got my test already um, working on this. You can see it right uh, how it's set up. I've got a cert not null and then tested bot dot get current events or tested bot dot get fantasy creatures, etc. And then I have an associated message after that. The message after this should tell you the programmer what you need to do to fix that problem so you can actually have some success with this problem project and have it work. And so a cert not null tested bot dot get current events, you need an array list of strings of current events and politics. So what that is saying is you need to have an array list you can actually work with on that. And it has to be not null for some bizarre reason. And so that would be your first thing you need to do is inside your tested bot, your chatbot object, you would need to have a method that returns an array list of strings for each of those different components. So let's go ahead and take a look at chatbot over here and see what we have for that. So you can see right here inside my get current events, I have an array list that's being returned, this dot current events. I look up here at the top, I've declared some array list right here of string, joke list, current event list, tech topics, fantasy creatures. And so right now I've got this return this dot current events. I'm gonna go over my chatbot test right here and I'm gonna simply just hit play. Now, even though there's errors, as you can see over here, here inside the test, that's okay. It's not gonna stop the test unit from running. Unit tests can run even with compile errors, which makes it so amazing. So all I have to do is have the test project open. I'm gonna go to that and hit the play button over here in Eclipse and have it run. I'm gonna tell it to run exact with that, saving the saves and errors exist. That's okay, proceed. And it's gonna bring up this associated JUnit test library. So I'm gonna in here, I'm inside that test setup lists and I have an assertion failed error. You need an array list string of Uh, current politics and events expected, not null. Oh, null. Oh, why is it null? I've got that data. I, I totally have that method over here inside chatbot. It returns that current event list. Why is this dot current event null? Oh, that's right. When I'm doing data members, if I want to have anything with it, I have to make sure I initialize it inside my constructor. So in my constructor, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to do that lovely bit right here. And so I'm going to take that and then make it so I initialize all of my data members right here. So all of my array lists are now initialized. I'm gonna hit save to make sure that's happy. I'm gonna go back over to my chatbot tests and we'll rerun that test again. So hit play again on that, errors proceed. Okay, go ahead and do on that. And my test setup lists, hey, it worked. There's no more errors. Every one of those are initialized. They're no longer null, it doesn't crash, yay. However, my next set of tests I need to solve, test list sizes. Well, in here, in test list sizes, the next test I'm working on, because I'm just going down vertically, just because it works, but you can go in any order on a lot of these. You simply just have to read what's going on with it. And so in this one, assert true tested bot dot get current events dot size is greater than 10. I need these 11 current event topics. Oh, well, I've got my array list right here. What am I gonna do? 
Well, one of the things that we do is we use the idea of helper methods so we can farm out some of that functionality because we don't want to have a giant pile of initialization structures and just add a whole bunch of stuff to this array list and then add a whole bunch to this array list and then add a whole bunch over here to that array list. We're going to use a little bit of a helper method right here called setup lists. And we use this so we can just farm out the work that goes along in that. As you can see, I said setup list right now, I only have one thing happening to joke list, fantasy creatures, and eight ball topics. But what you would do is for each of these different array lists, you'd go ahead and you'd make sure you meet their associated requirements inside the test right here. So, oh, I need to have at least 10, 11 things inside my current events list. So over here inside chatbot, I would want to go inside my setup list method, make another section for it right here, and I would do my current events list. So current event list dot add and parens and quotes and a semicolon at the end. And I recommend going through and just writing out that sequence um, right there for the number of times you have to make it. And again, I don't support copy pasta because I want you to get the practice of writing that. So we're going to do the same thing right here. Current event list dot add parens and quotes and a semicolon and repeat that process again. Current event list dot add parens quotes and a semicolon. And so for a current event, we can talk about there's been an election. We have the fact that Australia was on fire this year. And for another current event, we could go ahead and say, hmm, oh, Apple releasing new hardware chipset. Okay, so we have some new current events that are happening with that. And so I've got that in there. I've got current event list adding to that. I'm going to go back over here. I'm going to go back to the chatbot tests. And so this test has already passed. I'm going to play, hit play again on that. It's proceed again. I have errors. That's okay. I don't have to fix them. I'm going to go look inside that test list sizes and assertion failed. You need this 11 topics. It expected true, but it was false. And so I d still don't have 11 things in there. I only have right now. I only have three. So I need to go through and add enough of those to make that pass. And again, as I go through that, each time I get that, when I run through that lovely unit testing right here, each time I get a, a completion test working, it's going to give me a green checkbox saying it's fixed. I've got that part done. And as I go through and finish all those tests, eventually I'll get a completion message, the green bar of joy. So if I go over here and inside my chatbot 2020 and I go to my projects and inside my tests, I'll go ahead and get my structure test and hit play on this one. And if you get everything complete, you have total functionality, you get a green bar of joy and it's wonderful. And so this is what you're going for. Using that information we just saw over here inside our um, structure test, we go back over here, our chatbot test. I'm gonna hit um, Jane up back up here on this, on the lovely Jane uh, run. And we'll hit play again on that so we can pull that screen back up. And we'll make it so it shows up again over here on the side so we have a full screen for it instead of trying to close it off. And so for each of those tests, these are the things I need to do to make sure those tests pass. I've already passed my test introduction, so that's got a green check box of happiness. This has a green check of happiness, test encouragement, green check of happiness. This one right here, test fortunes, I have an assertion fill there. I need to have at least 20 fortunes or magic eight ball surfaces. Oh, okay. So I need to go ahead and look at that. And this tells me the things I need to do to make that test pass. I need at least 20 fortunes. My size is not greater than 20. I have to have at least eight positive, And I have too many negatives if my assertion count of negative is um, more than six. So I need to make sure I go ahead and write those fortunes for that. And so by using these messages right here that I supply as a second parameter to the assertions, that gives you an ability to try and solve those and go from there. So what you should do is import that project into your code and go from there. So I'll go ahead and review that in another video. But again, to do problem solving inside using JUnit, we open up the JUnit file. We run the JUnit file. It gives us messages and we look at the error messages right here. I go to the test I want to start off with. In this case, setup lists. I look at that setup list and I look at that, oh, these are the things I need to make those things pass. I complete that bit of code, rerun my test, fix it, repeat, and necessary, and make sure I commit and save as often as I need to to make sure I have that justified as well. And then I can go ahead and keep those problem solvings happening. It's a great way to do some iterative development and making sure I keep maintaining progress on solving my code. That's it. Have a great day. We'll see you later. Cheers.